I've just worked out why I can't see. I can't see because I'm looking straight at the phone. If I do that, I can see. I always thought I was short sighted, but my optician a few several months back said to me, you're long sighted. So the phone's too close for me to be able to see very well. I can see it, but this is when it's um, clear and this is a bit blurred. My eyes are blurred, whatever. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about something that happened 25 years ago. Um, and I remember it. I remember it because it it's. Though the sort of things um, like this become a wound, uh, n not a big wound, but they become a wound and they're always there. They don't go away um, and there will be several others um, along the way before and after. But this one came back to me yesterday when somebody commented on my post about the um, the about Ansel Keys, Senator George McGovern, um, blah blah blah. Somebody commented and um, suggested that um, I'm going to have to read it to you now. With respect, well, when somebody says like that, it's when they say, "With respect," or "I'm sorry, but well, you're not. You're not sorry, and you're not respectful." I said um, you don't look like someone that's clued up on the matter about obesity. And it reminded me of um, back in, uh, I think it was 1998, I was 25 years, I wasn't 25 years old, it was 25 years ago, I was 42 years old. Um, I was working in Kent at a day hospital, I was working with Mark and I was off sick. Um, and I'd been off sick for probably a week or two, I had no idea what was going on, I couldn't begin to vocalize um, or describe what was wrong with me um, and eventually thought I'm going to have to go to the doctors I can't just be off sick without some certificate saying what I'm off sick with but I could not pinpoint what was wrong my brain wasn't working it felt everything felt like I was wading through glue um, I couldn't I just couldn't focus on anything i wasn't fit to go to work i couldn't drive if i needed to go anywhere um, i had to be driven um, and it was horrible and i really didn't know what was going on um, very sub in subsequent years i realized what's going on but at this time i didn't know what was going on plucked up the courage to go to um, a doctor so it wasn't my doctor it was a doctor at the surgery um, in kent and um, wasn't somewhere that I went very often and I hated going to the doctors um why did I hate going to the doctors well, I just didn't it wasn't something I did but I knew that I'd got to go so it took me all of my I suppose at the time they weren't but all of my spoons to get myself to go to the doctors and I'm not talking just about physical spoons but mental spoons as well I really didn't want to go but knew that I needed to go I needed help I needed help and when you walk into a doctor's office your expectation is that you'll get help um, and I walked into this doctor's office he must have seen me come in but I certainly didn't see any eye contact I certainly didn't see him look at me he kept his head down and because of this I've remembered how uh, vaguely how he looks I mean it's a long time ago um, but he was a you know a, a thin doctor with with glasses in his late fifties, and he kept his head down and kept writing. And I started to talk to him, and he said, uh, "You need to lose weight." And it was like nothing else mattered. Um, he didn't hear me. Um, he just said to me, "You need to lose weight." I don't know how how much I I don't know how much I weighed then. I don't know what size I was then. Um, I was probably, I'm going to do it in English sizes, I was probably about a 14, 16 and um, I was quite fit because I used to cycle to work and I'd been cycling um, before that, before I worked at the day hospital, but before that I'd been cycling to the hospital and cycling from where I lived to the hospital uh, on an early shift at six o'clock in the morning or on a late shift. Um, was slightly uphill and it was two miles each way 
so I was fit. Um, I've never been small. I've never been uh, tiny apart from when I was breastfeeding. Um, but he just didn't look at me and I didn't get my needs met that day. And it hurt so much because I had put so much effort into going because I, I'd i gone and asked for help and asking for help back then wasn't something that I did very um, readily and I didn't get it and I was distraught I was absolutely distraught because it was like I don't know what to do I don't know what to do it's like I need help I need to know what's going on and he's not said anything or, or listened to me or offered me anything and the the comment last night reminded me of those times when you come across people that only see fat. They only see a fat person. They don't see the person behind the fat. They don't see the intelligent person. They don't see the person that knows stuff. They don't see the person that has a good um, and kind um, the disposition. They don't see any of that. They just see fat person and have a judgment about that. And it's shocking. It's really shallow. It's really shocking. Um, so that comment reminded me of that and there will have been times um, before and after where I've come up against that but, and it's only whilst making this whilst I'm talking to you that I'm thinking back and thinking fuck me I was fit and I'd been cycling and you know I wasn't obese I was in um, BMI terms um, I was but actually, for me, being short and, and um, short stature and, and whatever, I was actually fit. Um, it's, it was just, it was just awful. It was awful. And I remember um, it was so bad that I couldn't drive and my son was about to, it was going to be um, my son's passing out parade uh, in the RAF. And I had to be driven there by my ex-husband. That's how bad it was that I had to get my ex to drive me because I couldn't date myself. It was, and I remember it being a really difficult day. You know, it was not not because my ex was driving me, but the whole being there and having to make make decisions and choose this and do that was really hard because my brain just did not work. What I later learned um, is that that's what happens when I get stressed. And um, and I was obviously stressed at work. Um, I was, it was um, 1998, so I'd finished my training two years before and was some way into my psychotherapy training. Um, probably in my first, probably in my first advanced year of psychotherapy training. And I was obviously coming up against um stuff about my own psyche that was causing me issues and dealing with that and and also working um, one to one with with clients at the at the day hospital bringing their issues and and helping them and being com being compassionate giving them letting them be heard giving them what they needed what the doctor didn't give me um but that takes stuff out of you um you know, it it's you've got to be able to support yourself and have people support you when you're providing that sort of care to to very very sick people. Um, and this was in a crossover period, probably where I wasn't getting the level of support that I needed. Plus dealing with my own crap, plus supporting and um, caring for people who'd had had an awful 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 life um very damaged people really lovely people some of them were fat but that's not what i saw some of them were fat and i didn't that's not what i saw what i saw was somebody who was really damaged and needed to be heard and cared for and loved and that's what they got but it it took stuff from me which over time i learned to bring back into my life. So in the podcast that I my that I shared, and I think it was one that my sister shared, um, the woman Zoe Zoe, somebody, um, talks about how the people that have the most knowledge about obesity are obese people, which is true. It's like 
no, we don't want to be obese. It's not like, oh, I think I'll be obese. It's not, that's not how it works. And she says that, you know, nobody that she's spoken to, and she's spoken to zillions of people over the years that she's been studying obesity. Nobody wants to be obese. It's not a choice that we make. Um, and if you watch the podcast, rather than judge me because I'm fat, you might learn something. Um, I learned stuff yesterday watching the podcast, and I know a lot about obesity because I've been obese for a long time. I still learned stuff, and it was really interesting. Um, and I've forgotten my train of thought now. She talks, yeah, she talks about what, what was really distinct. She said, one of the podcasts, I watched two, there's a couple I've shared. One of them shared a, um, a chart that shows the sudden shift in obesity from the 80s, during the 80s. Um, and interestingly, um, I, one of the slimmest I've ever been, the smallest I've ever been was when I was to, to, at the end of me breastfeeding my son and um, I was in English term I was a 10 I haven't been a 10 since I was 6 um, my sister gave me a pair of jeans because I was wearing clothes that were bigger because I just didn't realise that I was smaller and she gave me a pair of jeans and they fit me like a glove and it was like oh wow um, but that's by the by so I was that was when I was at my smallest and that was he was born in 79 so that was 80 81 um and I have always blamed my obesity on um and I agree that I I acknowledge that I am partly to do with that it's not all to blame on the people that I'm blaming in that post um but I blame it on that I was I carried on eating the same amount of food, but had stopped feeding my baby. Um, and that should be, that should be a natural progression. I think if I think about it now, um, academically, it should be a natural progression that you just move from needing this amount of food to feed your baby to needing a certain amount of food to feed yourself. But all of that was in the beginning of the eighties when there was the sudden change and swap to this is what you should be eating and you shouldn't be eating this and you shouldn't be eating that and and the whole low fat um industry starts to um get moving and and i wonder i wonder whether the fact that i gradually gained weight wasn't just down to i carried on eating as if i was breastfeeding because i don't i don't think you can do that <clears throat> i don't think you can and um I'm sure that that's probably partly to do with what happened. And, and, and even then, you know, I, it makes me laugh. I was, when, when um, Phil went to nursery school and um, when he was about three, um, a friend of mine and I would drop our kids at nursery school and then we would walk two and a half miles to a, um what are they called i can't think what they called it like a community center it's not a sports center it was the the the, the community center it was the like where the civic hall was and everything we'd walk there two and a half miles at speed because we had to get there for a keep fit step whatever it was um session and then we'd have time to go and have a coffee and a chat and then we'd have to leave there and walk really fast. She was taller than me, so she could walk faster than me and um, walk really fast to get back to pick our kids up from nursery school. All of that was going on in the 80s. Um, I don't I don't I don't even know what size I was then. I really don't. But I wasn't I wasn't unfit. And, and it made me it makes me laugh now to think of the effort that we did that we put into walking there and walking back we probably didn't need the class but but that's what you did back then and that's what we were doing i think the worst time for me with regard to obesity was when i was working at the, the day hospital in kent and a lovely friend um gave me a car because you do that don't you oh yeah have a car um and that would have been again about around about 98 99 it was nine it wasn't it 98 definitely 
um, because I couldn't drive the car because I was sick. Um, so it was around, it was then. Um, and I think from then on, because I wasn't riding my bike and um, life changed and um, and I'd got a car, uh, the because my fitness level dropped, um, my I began to weight gain weight. Now the whole calories in calories out thing, according to the podcast I've been watching, and lots of other stuff that I've been watching over the the last few years, it, it's a bit of a myth. So I don't think the exercise and the bike riding was um, keeping me slim. Sure, it was. Um, I wasn't slim, but you know, keeping my obesity at at bay. Um, there would have been other things in the mix, and I don't know what they were. Um, so I just wanted to, I just wanted to say that a fat person isn't stupid. A fat person isn't unintelligent, um, and a fat person does does have opinions, um, and a fat person has value, um, and a fat person hasn't really deliberately decided. I think I want to be a fat person because that's ridiculous we don't deliberately just like there are lots of slim people who haven't deliberately decided i'm going to be a slim person some of them are really lucky and they are just naturally slim but quite often those people that are naturally slim are the ones that judge those of us that are naturally fat i'm not saying that i'm naturally fat but it isn't a choice that i made and um I think the, the, the take for me from the podcast that I was watching yesterday was that some um, captain surgeon, I think she said, I can't remember when it was back in the, back in the, probably not too far in the past, but back in the past said, why would an ancient food cause a modern disease? So what he was saying, he said, it makes no sense. Why would all of a sudden the things that we have been eating for millennia, the things that we were evolved to eat, including red meat, um, why would that suddenly become, be, be causing an obesity epidemic? And the, the other, there's another take from that. There's another take from that. When uh, the studies, and I don't know how many studies there were, on red meat um, became a thing in America, included in the study, included in the, um, the red meat group were burgers. What the fuck? You know, a processed food was included in the red meat box. And what the woman, Zoe, whose surname I don't remember, and I'm really sorry, I'm gonna look it up naughty of me isn't it Let, let's have a look um zoe 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 harkham h-a-r comb c-o-m-b-e um what she does is she looks at research and takes it to pieces and looked at looks at how they came to the conclusion that they came to and looks at the bits that they chose not to look to say and looks at where it's wrong or where it hasn't quite um, hit the mark. And what she said is that they come to this conclusion that red meat causes whatever it said they said red meat causes. I can't remember what it is now because I've never really taken any notice of it because I'm a carnivore. Um, that they, they come to the conclusion that it causes, is it a heart attack? Um, completely disallow for the fact that if you're eating a burger you're likely to be eating a carbohydrate bun and i know that many many burger buns are glossed over on top with high fructose syrup all the stuff that's in the bun the burger the fizzy drink and whatever else the fries completely ignores that so and and also a lot of, and of course the hamburger the burger in america the burger in america is is mainly um made with beef that's been fed corn and corn is is massively fat thing um so on for corn fed meat yes 
I'm sure it's not really good for you. But what we eat is pasture fed meat, our, our meat, our, our, our beef and our pork that we buy um, from the farm is grass fed. They're, they're fed in fields. They're not fed. I mean, they, they get a corn supplement in winter, but they're grass fed. So I'll link to the I'll link to two podcasts again. But it's really important to remember that fat people aren't stupid. Thank you. And on that note, I'll use my mouse to close my phone. Because, because I'm not stupid. <laughs>